Oh well guys, what up? It's Nick Brown here. Today I'm giving you another Ruby reaction. This time to Ruby, Volume 6, Chapter 7. Um, a little, um, disclaimer. There was the Ruby Rewind, so I saw the 30 second clip of Cinder and Neo. Um, nothing really major happened, so... Yeah, no new revelations, nothing spoiled. Um, and then, like... Two or three days ago, Rooster Teeth released a clip to the public showing who I am assume is Maria battling a fucking nev Nevermore. So, um, that was pretty dope. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I'm just wanting to let you guys know I've seen both of those two clips. Um, but yeah, last time on Ruby was the Apathy Grim, which was really, really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed them it, them introducing a uh, a new type of Grim that's not not really combatively strong, but, you know, it, it fucks with you. Like, it drains the life out of you. And I, I thought that was a really, really cool concept for a Grim. And, you know, <laughs> props to Rooster Teeth. Um... Then at the end, I mean, from the opening song, it's kind of obvious that Maria had silver eyes. I mean, it panned from her eyes to Ruby's eyes. So, I mean, everybody theorizes she was a silver eyed warrior. Plus the, uh, the, the little goggle things she wears. I mean, what more evidence do you need? Um, still in the moment, it was kind of shocking. I didn't, I didn't expect them to confirm it this early. Um, so when they did confirm it, I was really shocked and really happy that they did. Um, so that clip of Maria too, apparently was from this episode. So that being said, we may get Maria's backstory in this episode. And she may uh, give us some much-needed information about the Silver-Eyed Warriors. Um, and yeah, with that being said, I don't think there's much else I need to touch on. So, um, let's get into this. Ruby, Volume 6, Chapter 7. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Actually, 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 before we get into this, um, last volume, I did this thing because Volume 5 was 14 episodes long. After the seven uh, episode mark, I made a um, Ruby Volume Five thus far: the goods and the bads, talking about each episode and what was good, what was bad. Um, I had a really fun time doing it, so I'm definitely going to be making that video again, except for Volume Six. So, be f well. Uh, what I mean by except for Volume Six is. Last time I did Volume 5, this time I'm doing Volume 6. So I'm going to be doing the goods and the bads. Um, and with that being said, let's get into this. Ruby, Volume 6, Chapter 7, right now. Alright, let's do this. So we're starting off with the Neo and Cinder shit. Wish we weren't, but okay. I don't even give give a fuck about Cinder anymore. If I'm being honest. Fuck her. Now you understand. I've got to get the relic before it can be secured in Atlas. It's the only way that Sam... It's the only way we can accomplish our goal. Like, I'm sorry, Jessica Negri, but Cinder just sucks as a character. But unfortunately, Salem does not feel the same way. I've been instructed not to kill her. But you... Okay, that's kind of cool, though. You have no such orders. You can do as you please. Help me get to Atlas. Help me find her. And the rest is up to you. A 
I still don't like that plot line. It's stupid. Fuck me, dude. Okay, this is the clip I saw with Maria. Oh, they're starting off with all of the clips. Okay. <gasps> Could this be like the like the rest of the episode be entirely about Maria? Oh, that would be so dope if they did that. Dude, this was amazing. When I saw this clip, I'm like, yo, they're just releasing shit? What? And then I, I looked at it because I want to be sure, like, oh, this is actually Rooster Teeth. And I remember watching it, and I'm like, oh, fuck, this is grand, dude. This is grand. Yeah, a giant Nevermore. Dude, that's such a cool fucking weapon. A scythe with, with like... Oh, that's so dope. It's like Weiss's gravity shit, you know? Or however she can... You know what I'm talking about, right? I think. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, this is all new. This is all new. Oh, she just, that's what Ruby did to the dragon. Turned it to stone as Ta Yang said. Oh, that's kind of, that, that's so cool, man. Hmm. Who the fuck are these guys? Bandits? That one guy looks like, yeah, white. Oh, well, that's a fancy trick now, isn't it? S Afraid it comes with a price, though, love. Is that a Scottish accent? I don't think you realize who I am. Of course I do. Oh, the Grim Reaper. Are the last sixty seconds of your life. <laughs> Ooh, this fight animation, though, it's solid. Okay, Maria, I see you, I see you. Ooh. Her aura's turquoise look like? Oh! That's fucking dope! That's how her eyes are taken. It was a close call. I'll give you that. You know, the only reason my master wants you dead is because of your eyes. <laughs> as soon as you ain't got them no more, you might be able to convince me to spare your life. <laughs> Respect that. I'll fight it to the end. Shit. But I wasn't. I went into hiding soon after. I can't believe it. You, you're the Grim Reaper. You were a legend. You disappeared. World How building. Exactly does a legend just disappear? You never used your name. Never showed your face. Lots of us thought you were just laying low. 
Eventually, we came to accept that you were probably dead. But the stories about you... I based my weapon off of yours. I wanted to be as good as the Grim Reaper. Well, I'm nothing but a disappointment. So you're well on your way. How can you say that? Child, a huntress is supposed to protect others to the bitter end. But after I lost my eyes, I only ever looked after myself. Even after my surgery, I was too afraid to fight. Afraid someone would find me again. Finish what the others started. You shouldn't aspire to be like me. Especially when some of you are clearly stronger already. It's comforting seeing that your generation seems up to the task of inheriting this world. I'm just sorry I didn't do more to leave it in better shape. Well, maybe you can do something now. Teach me to use my powers the way you did. Thank you. Oh, they've made it? Oh, they've made it somewhere. I don't think it's Atlas quite yet. I mean, it could be, but I don't think it is. Oh, that's where they were going to the port to, um... Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived in Argus. Okay, oh, so that is Argus. Alright. So they're not an Atlas yet, right? Okay. I'm confused. Is that their destination, yes or no? I don't think it is. It's nice and warm. Hey, I promised, didn't I? That you did. Yeah, you did. It's good to see you guys. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. It's actually one of the largest non capital cities in all of them. Ah, no way! Oh, wait, wouldn't it be hard to settle something this big away from the main kingdom? Well, it was. Until Mantle showed up. Wow. Early settlement was that bus floating? Go well. But colonists from Mantle weren't able to help them brave the cold climate in return for goods that Solitas couldn't provide. The two nations worked together to create a hybrid city. While it still falls under Mistral domain, Atlas keeps a military presence here to help keep the people safe and to keep trade between the two nations steady. Well, until recently. Oh yeah, I am well with the borders. We should probably start looking for a ship. So, where have you guys been staying? Uh... <laughs> there you are! Is that... A savage... <laughs> Is that his sister? I can't believe I'm meeting your sister! I have some yep. questions. Oh, I can give you the rundown down later. Will you guys knock it off? What? I love telling stories about my baby brother. <laughs> Doesn't he have like I seven? Have baby. That is a baby. You're the only Ark living here? Yep, moved the second I could. Jean and I are the yep, only seven. home. I guess he just wanted to be like his big sister. He wasn't kidding. Was that a Kim Camp reference? Uh, you didn't deny it. Everyone, this is my wife, Terracotta. 
Hey, hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> Why, hello there. Wow, quite a party. You weren't kidding. Um, could I get some help, please? And you're sure it's all right if we stay with you? Of course. We're happy to house huntsmen and huntresses. You all risk so much to keep people like us safe. It's the least we can do. Especially for such an elite huntsman like yourself. Although I will say I was surprised to learn you had students helping you. Is that even legal? Uh, of course. Think of it as an extended training mission. Trust me, I was a professor. Even went to the same academy as them. And let me tell you, these kids are way better than we were at their age. Well, not that it's me specifically, <laughs> but a lot of students. Shut up, there's food! <laughs> <laughs> nice and warm hearted episode so far. <sighs> Excuse me, I'll be right back. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah, it will be. Tara's a technician for the town's relay tower. Unfortunately, the military's radar system is also housed there. Guess what's been on the fritz lately and who's getting falsely blamed? So, what's your plan for tomorrow? Well, we're trying to make our way to Atlas. We'll probably start with the military base. So, we kind of already tried that, and it didn't go super great. Come on, it couldn't be that bad. That's fucking it? Okay. Kind of a letdown. Considering last episode. I hate to be this guy, but that character is fucking ugly. I mean, come on, look at that shit. So that was my reaction to Ruby Volume 6 Chapter 7 and that felt like it went by incredibly fast. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> nothing happened again. Nothing fucking happened. I mean it was a nice warm hearted episode, but nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. I mean, we got to know how Maria lost her eyes. She may potentially become a, a mentor, a tutor for Ruby to use her eyes. And that's what was kind of implied in that scene. Um, we got to see J one of John's sisters. Got some... Actually, I take that back. We did get some world building. Which is really cool, really awesome. Um... Sometimes, like, those kind of things kind of lose me a bit. Um, I'm going to have to re-watch the episode to kind of catch everything. But, um... I was very aware there was some world building, which I really appreciate. It's the one thing... It was the one thing Rooster Teeth could have had in Volume 5, but they didn't put it. They definitely put it in this episode, which I can appreciate. It, granted, it wasn't very much, but it was something, and... Yeah, as they say, something is better than nothing. Um, okay, so like a while back on uh, YouTube, there was a video circulating about how diverse characters are going to be a part of the show. I'm fucking glad that it didn't feel forced. Like, it, it really didn't feel forced to me. Like, almost immediately, for me, I can tell when something feels forced. That didn't seem forced. It just... It was just like a part of the life, so, you know, it didn't feel forced at all to me. I'm okay with it. The only time I have a problem with diversity is when it's forced as hell. Um, this didn't feel forced, the whole, you know, John's wife being uh, clearly lesbian. I don't care. Didn't feel forced. I don't know why I should care, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just appreciative that it wasn't forced um 
So, Jean really has seven sisters. Huh, when did he mention that? He mentioned that in volume two, right? Uh, during the dance with Pyrrha. So, I thought he was kind of just over exaggerating. He really has seven sisters. Fuck. One of them in that photo I caught. That, that was a Kim Camp reference. Usually I'm terrible at recognizing references, but that one kid in the green shirt, that was a Kim Camp reference. It had to be. It stuck out like a sore thumb. So, yeah. Um, so, things didn't go well at the military base. Um, hopefully Crow can... Because Crow's a... Te he, he, technically, he's a professional uh, uh, huntsman. So, hopefully he can have some pull. And get to uh, at least speak to Ironwood. Um, but, yeah. That was a very weird place that they left off. It was just slamming the gate shuts and boom, it ended. Um, yeah. There was not much to really talk about. Is there? I don't fucking know. So actually, actually there is something I want to talk about. Maria. She's a legend. She's a legend called the Grim Reaper. That was the world building I was talking about. Like, we knew of, like, ancient... Like, did we knew of, like, the... Wait, did we even know of any legends? Was there... I'm trying to think. Did we, like, hear about, like, any legendary warriors? I don't think we have. So it's nice that, that, that Maria is a legend, essentially. That's some good world building right there. Now there's, like... Yeah, that's actually really cool. I like that. I kind of don't like how they incorporating how her eyes were taken. Um, if those people were somehow paid by Salem or a minion of Salem, of Salem, then I can understand it. But I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a cop out, if I'm being honest. At least the fight with how it happened was entertaining and awesome. Um, but I mean, still, I would have preferred something a bit more interesting. Hey, it might as well just be a fucking minor nitpick, but, um, yeah. It was really cool to know that, like, Maria's this legendary weapon. And apparently Crow based his scythe off of her scythe. Which, that's pretty cool, because we know Ruby wanted to be a scythe wielder because Crow was a scythe, we scythe wielder. And Crow was a scythe wielder because of Maria. That's actually kind of cool. Um, so that's, that's some really awesome world building and, you know, character moments. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's much to talk about. Again, there almost, like, nothing happened. It was kind of fucked. It was, it was like, um, Vault, Chapter 5 all over again, man. Like, you had a really, really good episode before it. And now you have this really, really kind of boring episode. I mean, there you had your cute moments with like, um, you know, Weiss and I think it was Yang. Let me go back. I think it was Weiss and Yang. Yeah, it was Weiss and Yang who was like geeking out over the little kid. That's kind of a cute image right there, actually. I'm not going to lie. Um... I don't know how I feel about Team Ruby reuniting with the rem the uh, remnants of Juniper. Because it was going well. Like, focusing on primarily Team Ruby was going well. If they can keep that up and have Team Juniper kind of act like, I guess, the comedic relief to a certain degree. And then be important when they need to be important. It could be good. But you need to still focus primarily on Team Ruby. Um, so yeah. Um, nothing new with Ozpin or Oscar. Yeah, I'm trying, again, I'm trying to grasp for, for something to talk about, but nothing happened. <sighs> Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed it way more than Chapter 5. But, um, 
Nothing happened. And with that being said, you guys, I think I am going to end it here. I don't want to go on babbling again like I did in Chapter 5. Um, nothing happened. Kind of a disappointment considering last chapter we had a really, really, really solid one. Um, but, you know, can't win them all, I guess. Um, remember, I'm going to be going over the goods and the bads of Volume uh, 6 so far in a... Uh, upcoming video so look out for that and with that being said i will end it here if you guys like this video rate it one through ten like comment share subscribe do all that fun crap and as always this is your boy nick Brown. out with a yay